Hey guys, it's Matchy here again with another Clip Studio Paint tutorial. So I made a tutorial the other day about the text tool and lettering, but it was more of like a quick tip. Well, not a long tip, we'll say. And I didn't really get into the particulars of the text tool, and I realized that maybe I kind of breezed by the actual basics of the text tool, so I thought I would quickly kind of go over the text tool a little bit in case people were clicking on that video and hoping to see basics on the text tool and I kind of was just off on my own tangent, solving my own problems, if you will. So uh, I was just sharing a tip. So here we go with um, the basics of the text tool. So we're just gonna go over here and click on the text tool, which is the A on your toolbar. And I'm gonna select text from the top of the menu. It should be at the top of your menu. I don't know if it's different for other people. So, and then I just click over here on my canvas and you'll see it creates a new text layer over on my layers. And I type my sample text. Sample text is so good. Isn't sample text good? So then from here, um, I can just leave it as is. Um, but obviously what we're, what the cool thing is about Clip Studio's text tool is that it automatically interacts with the balloon features. So actually I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. Let's first look at the tool property. If you come over here, you're gonna have your usual type options, which will be your font selection and um, the size, which you can adjust, which actually will only adjust if you're highlighted. So that'll adjust it before you type it or once it's highlighted, it'll adjust the text. Um, also the style, which you can bold it, italicize it, and uh, underline it. It's not a very bold underline, but it'll underline it. Strike through, um, and the justification, which I have it centered, but you can let, it's not really, you're not really gonna see it on this one, but you know, you have your justification options and um, actually it's text direction because in case you're using a language that reads the other direction. Um, Anti-aliasing on or off. And I'm not sure what this is. This looks like maybe an option for if you have glyphs or something like that. Let's see. Yeah, so it shows you all the different text glyphs. I haven't even looked at that yet. That's pretty cool that they have that. So going back to what we were working on over here. So these are your balloon options, as I was saying before. I got a little sidetracked there. Um, they also have this option for flash, which is more balloon shapes, I guess you would say. But I'm not even gonna go into those today because I don't use them, so I don't really feel qualified to talk about that. Haha. <laughs> so, um, you have your ellipse balloon, which if you saw my other video, you know I'm not a huge fan of the perfect ellipse outline. And those you can adjust, and I don't know if it adjusts real time. Probably not. But you have the options, and this is true for all of them, where you can alter the brush sizes, which is the thickness of the outline. You can change um, the line color and the fill color, um, and whether or not it goes on a new layer or not. And that, oh, this is kind of cool. I didn't know, know about this. Is you have ellipse or polygon or rectangle, which will be really handy if you are doing captions instead of dialogue. So pretty cool. Um, and then it has your different anti-aliasing options here. So um, I'm gonna get rid of this. Next option is the curve balloon, which if you saw my last video, I like to use kind of like this. You can do it differently. I mean, you can create any kind of shape you want with this, but this is how I get the shape that I want, which is I basically just draw a box around it. And uh, same, similar options. They have different, different curve options. This is actually, let me try this. Huh. Okay. So it's got more like Bezier, Bezier, Bezier handles. Um, so different different ways you can do that. I've, I've been happy with this one. Um, if you watch my last video, you'll see how I make that work. Um, but same options as we were looking at before. 
So, and then the third and final option is balloon pen, which I'll show you is basically instead of making a shape using the mouse, you would use your stylus or you could use your mouse and you make your balloon shape that way, which could be handy in certain situations. And that one, the sub, the options include correction, which is handy, and all the other basic ones we were looking at before, and also brush shape. So you can get pretty creative with that one, actually. So next up, I'm just going to show you, which I already showed you in the last video, but I'm going to show you again, um, just making a tail on the balloon, which is the next part of why this is so handy. So I'll make my shape. And it might be a little wonky, I'm just doing this really quick here for your benefit. So they have a thought balloon tail. I'm not a big fan of this. It's really, um, I don't know. All, the only option is the width of the tail. And that's kind of what it looks like. It looks really mechanical to me. Even if you do like a spline. Really mechanical. Not not a big fan of that. But it's there if you want it. <laughs> um, here's, here's the regular balloon tail. Um, coming over to the options. So there's different ways of bending it. So there's a straight line which is a straight line pretty basic and you can change the width of the tail uh, let's see so there is a little wider it looks a little more correct to me so and you can add you know it's a bunch of people shouting yeah go for it and it just automatically integrates it into the into that word balloon so that's cool um, there's polyline which is straight and then when you click you can bend it at an angle and you can do that you know infinitely and it gets smaller and smaller and that's how that works and then my favorite is spline um, which will give you that where you pull it straight click turn and there you have your which same as as polyline you could do that infinitely and if you really needed to work your way around the artwork or something you know you can make a really long tail um, my little tip for the tail is um, you have to double click to end it and I always kind of it always gives me kind of an issue so that time it actually worked, but a lot of times it will see, I don't know if you can see, but it get, I actually, when I double clicked, I actually pulled a little extra off of there. So sometimes I get it good and sometimes I don't. So anyway, you're like, well, thanks for telling me that, Matt. Um, the tip is if you want to avoid that, instead of double clicking at the end just hit enter and it'll it'll finish it for you so you can click for all your turns and then hit enter and you're done so that's my quick tip for that hey guys one quick thing i forgot when i originally recorded this i wanted to tell you about resizing your text in your balloon so um when you when you have your sample text here if you go over to the type tool and you click text um, you'll have this bounding box with handles. The corner hand, you can use the corner handles or the side handles to scale the text. And you can just point on the bounding box and move the text. Click and move text. If you want to do the same for the balloon, what you need to do is hold down control or probably on Mac it's command 
and it'll make a bounding box for the balloon and you can do the same for the balloon and and you'll see it affects just the balloon this text stays the same size of course if you move it the text will go with it and stay in the same position but the resizing affects the balloon only so that was just something I had left out of my original recording and I wanted to pop that in there because that's handy and important so that's pretty much all I wanted to tell you about the text tool Hopefully, if you weren't familiar with it so well, um, this gives you a little bit more information on that. Um, and if you were watching my last video and you were aggravated that I did not um, go too deeply into the text tool options, this kind of rectifies that. So I, I realized after I uploaded that I was like, um, this doesn't really answer a lot of questions. So. <laughs> So hopefully this is helpful in that regard. Um, other than that, happy creating. Thanks for taking the time to watch this tutorial. Hope it helped you out. I'm going to be having more tutorials coming on Clip Studio Paint and possibly other software. So if you want to hit that subscribe button, you can go ahead and do that. I'm also very active on Instagram. My name there is matchy.art. If you want to follow me there, you can keep up to date with whatever I'm working on at that moment. And yeah. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.